Fifty years ago, Basil Wright and Harry Watts' classic documentary, Night Mail, celebrated the role of the railways as the nation's distributor. Now, the age of steam has turned into the day of the diesel. Virtually every commodity that you can count on a supermarket shelf was put there by a truck. In 1936, the railways ruled. Now, 50 years later, there is a new king. This is the night mail crossing the border, bringing the check and the postal order, letters for the rich, letters for the poor, the shop at the corner of the girl next door, pulling up B took a steady climb, the gradients against her, but she's on time. and whirl and boulder, shoveling white steam over her shoulder, snorting noisily as she passes, silent miles of wind-bent grasses, birds turn their heads as she approaches, stare from the bushes at her blank-faced coaches, sheepdogs cannot turn her course, they slumber on with paws across, in the farm she passes, no one wakes but a jug in a bedroom gently shaped. And a lot of car drivers, when you're going along the road, they pull in front of you, right? They don't, or they, they just look at a vehicle. They don't realise you've got 38 ton, and it takes a bit of stopping, you know? Well, we get something like 600 a day going through, and probably 180 a night from Monday to Friday staying on the park overnight. I've always put the work first because I enjoy doing it. And I've always said that if anybody wants to take me out or, you know, maybe get married, uh, they're going to have to put up with me and my truck driving. And that's it. You know, I will always drive trucks. <laughs> As the daylight comes creeping in the sky, I'm eating weary dress. Sweet pal is the only reason why we still see... Uh, this is what's called a tachograph. It's normally known throughout the driving world as the spy in the cab. We have to fill one in each day. It records mileage, hours driven, speeds and meal breaks taken. They can tell exactly what time you started, how many miles you've driven, whether you've had your meal breaks at the appropriate times. They can tell practically everything. Gear changes, the whole lot.
we started out by seven in the morning. We go out and pick up a load. So we, on average, we do about three loads a day. And uh, I like the work. It's all right. Meet different farmers, you know. No, I, I like the job. It's grand. I'm in all, ain't you, Joe? consists of egg, bacon, tomato, sausage, beans, fried slice, mushrooms, thick bread and butter, or thin bread and butter, or toast, large cup of tea, uh, £1.80, and it's a good helping on a plate, and it really fills them well, like, yeah? You know? um, we do a bigger one for the trucker, for the actual, the really hungry person, which consists of a steak and kidney pie, homemade, it's just a fair slice on a plate. Um, we get beans, tomatoes, chips, mushrooms, um, fried potatoes, two thick bread and butter, and it comes up really heaped well up on a plate. Like. Boy, four. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, four. <laughs> um, we do other meals as well. We do ham off the bone with egg and chips, and it's uh, really delicious, like, you know, really worth eating. Um, we do lots of sidelines as well, um, which consists of we've got burger and egg and chips, bacon and chips, sausage and chips, corned beef and chips, um, egg, bacon and chips, everything what goes with the chips. We do all different omelettes, plain, cheese, bacon, ham, mushroom, beans, tomatoes, um, everything comes with crusty bread, all at the total from a pound to 150. Um, we also have a cottage pie, which is homemade, which is very tasty, like, and it all comes up crispy on the top, like, you know. Um, we also have a chicken curry. Um, we make it to whatever they like, like medium or hot, like, you know, and it comes with rice or chips, um, or they can have potatoes, but it all depends how they want to go, like, you know. Um, we have chilli as well on the menu, sausage toad, which is a good old English um, mix, 
chicken drumsticks, what we do as well, like which either comes with roast potatoes or boiled potatoes, gravy, one thing or another. If you've got any room left after the finish of them, what we normally do, we come back with um, an apple crumble and custard, or you can have it with ice cream, or you can have it with fresh cream, for 40 pence the sweets. All dinners are 160, except the top one, which was the braised steak at two pound. Um, we also do an apple and raspberry crumble, to an apple and raspberry pie, a jam pudding, a plum pudding, a bread pudding. It's quite a mixture there. Would you like a tea, mate, or have you been served? Been done, thank you. You've been done, thanks, yeah. The fool on the road at the motor show. Like all the punters, he likes to think he's getting in on the act. So we're in fourth high, hold speed steady and just drive it like a truck. We've got 38 tons. And you're revving just a bit over, but never mind too much. Keep it at that speed. Okay. Because you spoke, you know, because you're near. You're too near. Well, you can't help being too near, but he's just pulled in on you, can you? <laughs> just hopeless, some of them. See, what other sort of things to see him do? Anybody else want to? Have you seen him? Yeah, yeah what else? Sure. Yeah, loads of things, isn't it? Loads, just, loads of things. Just generally don't give you a chance. They just don't give way. They just don't give you the time. Tom as just said, you don't give you enough time to stop. I just don't think half the time they drive along in a dream, I reckon. You ain't got no call not to think of what I'm falling, to thinking that I ain't too clever. Ain't hey, not having one thing, no, not another, rather neither is it anything, whatever. And it's not, not knowing that there ain't nothing showing an answer to the name of Trevor. Never, ever, never, never, ever. Whether I broke down or, or not, I just pull into the side and think, oh, we'll have a look up here, I'll run up the bank to see if there's a nice view over the other side. And I suppose if there is, they take a photo. If not, they come back down again. Or might have they set up a picnic and all summer, don't I? Have you ever seen them having a picnic on a motorway? No, I have. Oh, I have. Why browse wonder whether clever Trevor's clever? Either have they got, nor neither haven't not got no right to make a clock out of Trevor. Why should I feel bad about something? And the foot comes and nothing less to add to a load of old to I know and I've not a flag cause there's nowhere to put it Even if I had, I'm a bit of a jack the lad Reading papers, that's a classic thing isn't it? Reading papers, well reading a book 
Well, we've done the motorway. With his finger, I see his thumb on the steering wheel like that. Reading the book, though. Who was going down here yesterday? See, I was down here. Now, that's not stupid, is it? You know, bloody ridiculous. That might be nice. We've got a nice sunny day, isn't it? Right? Nice sunny day, no? Reading a book. Basically, lady chat his lover or something, you know, right on him. He just drives down and sitting there like that, reading the book. Bloody ridiculous. Tell you what a lot they do of. Any, any motorway you care to mention. I won't go through them all. I know them all, but I don't want to go through them. Three lanes, slip road, off to the M11, for instance. It happens to look down there. Idiot coming out down here, 80 mile an hour, right? And the lorries and cars are in their right lanes, and all of a sudden, no indication, just goes straight across. You know, you're going to kill somebody eventually. And I've seen, I've seen it happen. I've seen it happen up the M6. Haven't you? I've seen it happen up the M6 many a time. And there's one accident I saw, I tell you. And I still dream about it now. And it was the same sort of thing. It's come across like that, and a lorry, is it, he's, caught, he's caught in too quick. A lorry hit him, and it was, a tri it was an old Triumph. Do you remember the old Triumphs? It's hit him, and it flipped him up like that. And he's gone under the bumper and he's pushed him along the motorway. It was pissing down the lane and the, the, the metal was screaming. And I often dream about that now because I could see him. His brakes are very big, but they're also being modified now, aren't they, with uh, well, better technology? Brakes on heavy trucks is an area that's been substantially improved over the years. All the axles have load sensing on the, on the drive axles to prevent premature locking of the brakes. Right. And full anti-lock brake systems are available now, so that they can't, in any condition, get a locked-up wheel. So that will mean that the vehicle can stop in a straight line? That's uh, right. In all conditions. That's right. But the systems generally have got more safety features on than the average private car. There's always a backup system available, mm. and there's always uh, protection for any one system. Of course, these engines are now quite technically advanced, aren't they? Oh, yes. The, obviously, the engines are turbocharged. We've had turbocharging on diesel engines in trucks for over 30 years. It's a recent innovation on passenger cars. And What about safety? Well, the cab is all steel and has to meet stringent impact requirements. It has a reinforcement all the way around in the form of a hoop, which protects against impact damage from all directions. A motorway is like a great vortex su sucking traffic in. I look towards the development of uh, information signalling systems, matrix systems throughout the, the motorway network. And I think the great area of possible increase of uh, technological development will be in relation to safety and enforcement. And I deliberately put those two things together. Through the use of surveillance technology, we can develop on the motorway an opportunity to actually impact driver standards. I think that's inconceivable across the vast intricate network of roadways in general. But on a motorway, I think it is conceivable. Uh, and if people become aware that driving standards are surveilled and recorded, possibly the use of cameras and so forth to prosecute people, to develop evidence, uh, then it may affect how people drive on motorways. 
uh, I, I can see in the future that we shall need helicopters. The control. Expresses are reported at regular intervals. Just a moment. How's the damn post running? She's on time, due any minute. Sweet muncher, sweet muncher, copy, copy Tomodachi. Sweet muncher, sweet muncher, copy Tomodachi. Haystack, haystack, copy Tomodachi. Any big wheeler, copy Tomodachi. Yeah, we can't be a Tomodachi. On the window. On one six, on one six. Yeah, can't be old partner. How are you today? Not too bad, mate. Well, uh, I've been uh, local today, mainly. Uh, made a nice change of mine. Uh, I have enough notes away from home, so uh, that was suited me for that day. All right, you did. Good, you put Big Mama on. Morning, Pathfinder. Big Mama speaking. How are you? Hello, big mama, my little sweetheart. When are you going to run away with me? Anytime. You name the day, dear. Oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow? Is that not it? Tell me. <laughs> right, you dear. Are you keeping all right? Uh, not so bad. You, know, only... you can't tell exactly who you're going to talk to because uh, the handle is the only uh, communication you have. Uh, no addresses and no surnames are ever given. But you contact anybody, lorry drivers, these are the main people. They usually like to talk to somebody. And of course, the people who are housebound, they like to talk to somebody, and you get the two way system going. wrong uh, a fellow with a cloth, cloth cap and muffler it tends to be thick this is not true at all most of these chaps can spend seven days a week away from home one really has to put themselves in the truck driver's position to appreciate this forget your normal um, motorway cafes that you will go into if you're driving a car and then think of your overnight allowance which is to take you through 24 hours from that you're supposed to get possibly a bed, uh, a supper, a breakfast, and lunch for the next day, all for about 12 quid, 13 quid.
When I first came, I really thought I was going to be in for a big surprise. I thought, dirty old men, the lot. And I, I really must say that, quite honestly, I've never met such gentlemen. I mean, you probably get one or two that are real so-and-sos. But the rest, the, the most of them are very nice. I mean, the, the, you know, if you're ever in trouble, I saw me one night out there, I went out of here at 10 o'clock, I got out to my car and I got a puncture. I came back in this bar here and I asked three lads, I said, can any of you lads change a tyre? I've got a flat, flat tyre. No problem. And they were all clean. They, they hadn't got the working gear on anymore because once they come in, they go and have a shower, they get changed, they have the dinner, and they're just like any other man. They're not, the, you can't call them dirty old truckers. When you see them cleaned up, there's no way you can call them dirty old truckers. And I must say that out of all the men that come in here, I trust most of them. These lads are nice men. They're someone's husband, someone's, someone's brother, someone's father. They're, they all belong to someone, and they're really nice. <laughs>
coming over. And again, Bill. Harry, second division. Another one. First division. Coming over. Oh, buddy, what's the game? Turn it up. Oh, great. There are seven sorting bands on the postal special. Each sorter has 48 pigeonholes, each representing a town. The packets are sorted separately. As the train progresses, the name is scribbled in four bands. of the dropsy layer sunshine. Get it up. Get it up a little bit for Trace. That's a good boy. And keep it... That's it. Look at you. What's that? A donkey's hind leg. Andy, go and sort them out. Oh, oh Jeff. We've lost two. Oh. How are we doing on time? Screw your face up. You can cry and scream. Go on. Whoa. 6.22. Well done, Chris. Great stuff. Anybody who's not cheering is going to have to come up here and do this. I can remember one instance when I was parked up at the, the BRS truck stop and for a night out and uh, I went in and, and got my pint of beer the same as everybody else and sat there and I know they've got a video there and they show video films and uh, I'd heard of stories about oh they show good ones you know <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I was just about to depart and the manager came to me and he said, um, he says, oh, some of the chaps want to um, see the football and some of them want to watch a girly film. And I said, well, I says, if you put the football on, I'm going to bed. <laughs> so I went and got myself another pint and settled at the back of the room to watch a film with everybody else, you know, because I, I think, well, I'm a truck driver the same as everybody else, so I'll just watch it. <laughs> found it quite funny. <laughs> um, things have been the same for years and years. It doesn't seem to be any different, except there is the odd shower about one or two, you know, where there wasn't any, any at all. I know two places where there's a shower now, which is pretty good stuff. <laughs> it's one of the girls. Come on, lady trucker. Well, I'm glad we got one of the girls. Yes, give her a round of applause, fellas. Great stuff. She's played this before. <laughs> There's something about a truck, something exciting to me. I like to see it going down the motorway. Um, I, I get a big thrill when I'm sitting there behind the wheel. You know, I, I sort of sit there and I'm thinking, oh, this truck's all mine, you know. <laughs> and uh, I get a sort of shiver of excitement. <laughs> I did try another job in between. I know all the lorries kept going past. I think, oh, I wish I was back on the road. Yeah, it's it's something that seems to get into your system. I don't quite know how to describe it. I can only think of it as being a drug. Um, it's something you're hooked on. Um, I feel as if when I'm on holiday and I'm away from it for a while, I feel as if I need a fix. And I'm always looking at the big trucks going by, and I'm thinking, oh, I want to get in that, and I want to drive it. And uh, I'm in a big wide load past my house on Sunday morning. I could hear the commotion going on outside. Well, I dashed outside with my nightie on and my camera, and I thought, I want to drive that truck. <laughs> and I was frustrated because I was stuck in the house. I mean, I'm not really a house sort of person. I want to be out on the road. Oh, hell.
The climb is done. Down towards Glasgow she descends. Towards the steam tugs, yelping down the glade of cranes. Towards the fields of apparatus, the furnaces, set on the dark plain like gigantic chessmen. All Scotland waits for her. In the dark glens, beside the pale green sea lochs, Men long for news. Letters of thanks, letters from banks, letters of joy from the girl and the boy, receipted bills and invitations to expect new stock or visit relations, and applications for situations and timid lovers, declarations and gossip, gossip from all the nations, new circumstantial news, financial letters with holiday snaps to enlarge in letters with faces scrawled in the margin, letters from uncles, cousins and aunts, letters to Scotland from the south of France, letters of condolence to Highlands and Lowlands, notes from overseas to Hebrides, written on paper of every hue, with the pink, the barnet, the white and the blue, the chatty, the catty, the boring, the boring, the cold, and official, all the hearts are pouring, ever stupid, short and long, the typed and the printed and the spelt all wrong. I've been driving about 17 years. Oh, I think it's 17 years. I'm not all right. Without actually adding it up, I can't remember. Um, and I got into it through my husband. I used to watch it go with him. I used to sit there on, on my day's holiday going with him. And one day, he sort of said, right, that's it. I was sick of sitting here. It's time you learn to drive. He just got out and said, right, off you go. Stuck some L plates on, HGV L plates. And that was it. I couldn't believe it. I've never been so frightened in my life. The lorry was huge. When the rosy glow of the rose cafe by the steamed up windows and the jukebox howl on the overflow of the motorway where the scammels roar and the Foden's growl. At a corner place with an all-round view, her face and mask and the eyes are blank since great length with a rose tattoo, she's been waiting all night for Jack Knife Frank. Know that somewhere across the Pennine Way, a truck is moving on. True love waits at the Rose Cafe, the night has nearly gone. Yeah, he's finished. Oh, 